Gareth Edwards' original science fiction film, The Creator, is an absolute visual masterpiece, undoubtedly ranking amongst the most visually stunning films of the year, and all he used was a Sony FX3. It serves as a remarkable testament to the boundless possibilities of cinematography, where a filmmaker possesses a clear and unwavering vision, as well as a deep commitment to a unique and distinctive visual aesthetic. In this video, I will demonstrate how I assembled a straightforward Ronan gimbal rig drawing inspiration from the same setup used in the creator. While delving into the behind the scenes of the creator, I stumbled upon a unique setup involving the Sony FX3 and the Ronin RS2 gimbal. It was a hybrid of a gimbal and a shoulder rig of some sort. My own rig, however, deviates slightly from this design as I fashioned it using spare parts I had at my disposal. The majority of these components are sourced from small rig. All the necessary links are in the video description if you feel like building this rig too. Here we have the Sony a7S III, complemented with a 35mm Sure anamorphic lens. In the film, they opted for the 75mm Kowa anamorphic lenses, mirroring the aspect ratio found in Tarantino's The Hateful Eight. Got room for one more. Given the constraints of my budget, this 35mm anamorphic lens serves as the closest match available to me. The RS2 gimbal was another integral element, and I couldn't help but notice the addition of a top handle in their setup. I've replicated this using a small rig attachment. To the side, I've mounted the Atomos Ninja 5 recorder, capable of capturing footage in ProRes RAW format. While my setup varies from the one used in the film, I'm optimistic that the results will be comparable. Here's a few shots I've captured already using the rig. If you're someone who loves filmmaking and photography, hit that subscribe button below. Shameless plug now, if you're interested in my S-Log3 movie LUT pack, the link to that will be in the description below too. I use my LUTs all the time on my footage. To use this LUT pack, you will need to convert your S-Log3 footage to Rec. 709 first. To do this, use the base LUT file provided in this pack. In Premiere Pro, apply the base LUT via the input LUT drop-down menu in the basic correction tab of Lumetri. It is very important that you first colour correct and balance your footage after applying this LUT for optimal use of the cinematic pack. From here, you can now apply any of the LUTs provided in this pack via the Look drop-down menu in the Creative tab of Lumetri. You can also adjust the intensity of the look via the slider. To make your S-Log3 footage look good, it's important to start by getting the colours right. If the lighting when you filmed was normal, aim for neutral colours. This means that there should be a balance between light and dark areas in your video. If you filmed in mixed lighting, choose the colours that match the feeling you want in your video. When you're adjusting colours, be careful, don't go too extreme. For example, don't make the bright parts too bright if it means making the main subject in your video too dark. Also, don't make the dark parts too bright either if it means overexposing your main subject. Remember, there's no one-size-fits-all rule for colours. Your goal is to make your video look the best it can for the specific footage you have. The parts you'll need to build this rig are the RS3 or any of the previous models, a small cheese plate rig by Nicey Rig or something similar, a small rig bore head clamp part number 1138, a monitor cage part number 2209, the Atomos Ninja, the small rig universal shoulder rig kit which consists of three 40cm rods, a base plate, handles and a shoulder pad attachment. Like I mentioned before, all the links to these parts will be in the description below for you. Now let's discuss the steps involved in building this gimbal rig. We need to start with the camera base, a standard small rig base, which we fastened to a cheese plate using two screws, subsequently serving as a stable platform for the Ronin battery base to be placed. Next we slide it onto the rails, which gives us the desired flexibility to position the rig precisely where we want it, either shifting it forwards or backwards as needed. 
Now it's time to attach the gimbal. However, before attaching the components to the shoulder rig, I highly recommend that you first balance the gimbal while it's in its upright position. Side note here, if you're planning to use the Bluetooth record feature, head over to the Sony camera settings first. Hit menu, head down to the network tab, which is a green globe icon. Select Bluetooth and make sure Bluetooth is turned on. Also make sure the Bluetooth remote control is turned on too. This can be found in the same place, only under the transfer remote sub menu. If you don't do this, it won't work at all. All that's left to do now is swipe down on the display screen on the Ronin, click the Bluetooth icon, head back over to the camera and select pairing. Hit confirm and the Ronin will connect to the camera pretty much straight away. You'll only need to pair this one time as the Ronin will remember your settings and pair the camera every time you boot up the gimbal. As for the Atomos Ninja, I've securely fastened it to a small rig bracket, clamped beside the shoulder rig handle. This arrangement allows you to fine tune its positioning according to your preferences. And there you have it, we've now established a rudimentary setup with the gimbal. In their rig, they made use of the DJI expansion base kit for the gimbal, a crucial component responsible for powering the gimbal, camera and possibly the monitor. It's worth noting that the rig has a pronounced front heavy quality. To counterbalance this, it's probably a good idea to add some counterbalance weights to the back, affording flexibility to adjust the positioning to your preference. This is also an opportune time to integrate accessories like a wireless system or a DJI focus wheel for added versatility. The beauty of this setup is its remarkable comfort on your shoulder, particularly beneficial for those who use gimbals for extended periods, as it's less taxing on your back. And here we are, a budget-friendly alternative that is slightly less complex to the awesome camera rig Gareth Edwards used. Some other things to mention, I've configured the gimbal to medium settings, ideal for the typical use, aligning with how it was utilised in the film. However, the pressing question that arises is why they opted for a shoulder-mounted RS2 rig in the first place. One plausible reason could be their desire for a setup that offers greater comfort during extended usage making it easier to wield for prolonged periods. Additionally, this unique rig might have been chosen to accommodate an array of supplementary components, such as wireless transmitters, the V-Lock battery, and various other attachments at the rear. 